Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Reese Bits and Pieces. For today's vlog, I will share to you how our GT is like as a hemodialysis physician. And yes, I know this HD vlog part 2 is long overdue, but I now have time to snitch the snippets out and I can now share it with you guys. Come on in! Hi guys, welcome sa hemodialysis So for the routine, the nurses and patients usually get the pre HD weight using this scale over here it will then be compared with their dry weight the dry weight is the weight considering that they are not congested or doesn't have any fluid excess in simple terms dry sila hindi sila basa that is where you will actually base your ultra filtration goals or your hata no that's the same amount of fluid that you take out from them best if we would wash their arms and hands before the procedure and then they will sit on these chairs beside the HD machines by the way guys this video is for my colleagues who want to get a glimpse of how to duty as HD POD if you haven't tried having duty here or at least you're interested let me at least orient you if you are wondering what to do I started with no idea as well so I know how you feel I just ask for my seniors consultant doctors and those who have experience read and learn it along the way and hey, just to tell you guys, these videos are captured months ago when I was still working here. So the setup may have changed and I may have changed my HD duty somewhere else by the time I'll finish this vlog. But it will give heads up as to how an HD looked like. You know the setup and most of the feeds have been consented by the people involved. I ask permission from them so I can show it in this vlog. Alright? So usually there's a corner for the PODs or the HD physician on duty and that's my place over there. So just for a recap, dialysis is a treatment for CKD, stage 5 or ESRD. So it can be done through peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. And if it's hemodialysis, they use machine and dialyzer with dialysis solution. So it replaces the kidney, blood, and dialysate. And they are circulated, in, so allowing diffusion of solutes from blood to dialysate. And then the excess electrolytes or metabolites will be going out from the patient's body usually an hd runs for four hours per patient some patients will have it two to three times a week depending on your assessment and the assessment of nephrologists so you are to coordinate with them you may contact them if you are to update relay and refer to them depending on the case um, in a day there will be two to three shifts depending on how many machines so it's like you're going to have two to three rounds as well if you are driving or traveling you may have seen hemodialysis establishment along the roads and they are the ones that we call freestanding dialysis centers and this one that i'm showing you right now is in hospital so here in a hospital in patients uh, or admitted patients and out patients may be catered so here you can also encounter icu patients so this video shows an hd nurse starting the dialysis by cannulating the av fistula of the dialysis patient can you see that? It's very cool, right? So, so for AV fistula, it's actually the best choice for access if you are eligible. It's the most natural access site since it's formed from your own blood vessels and it has lowest chance of infection and clotting. But the thing about that is AV fistula takes time to mature, like 6 to 8 weeks and you have to exercise it for it to mature. So for majority of patients in the early phase of their hemodialysis journey, they usually retain their IJ catheter so that they can have an access for hemodialysis. But the thing about your IJ catheter, they are for short term only and they are very prone to infection. So 
um, this can also be extended when there is a failure with the fistula and uh, or if the fistula has already been clotted that is why when they are using their AV fistula it's important to remind them that it should not be used for BP um, BP measurements or venipuncture just so it won't have any hematoma because if that happens it can no longer be used and it's gonna be a problem for the patient so a little story for this patient he is still on his early phase of chronic kidney disease and he is still waiting for his AV fistula creation <laughs> Yun lang naman ang ano natin. Basta ingatan mo lang yan at huwag kang lagnatin. Huwag ka rin mag chills. <laughs> yung chills yung mga ano, no? First use. First use. Ano yun? Hmm? First use. First use. Kapag bago lang yung dialyzer mo kasi, kumbaga para may mga chemicals pa doon nakasama. So nag-react lang yung katawan ng tao. Kasi iba naman, yun nga, huwag naman magka-COVID. <laughs> iba kasi, chills lang din yung kanila. Nilalamig lang sila. Baka matakot sa matalag natin. Eh. Hindi ka na... <laughs> ano lang? Hindi <laughs> natin pinapagamit yung isang braso. Pag-aralin na siya para... So this one, this is another HD access. It's... Um, another long term relatively long term as long as it's been taken care of this is called for the cat and it's tunneled under the skin so this is one of alternative or choices for people one of the choices for people who have frequent troubles when it comes to clotting over their fistula site comes with a higher price of course <laughs> Bukano pagawa niyo ng ganito? Huh? Sixty five. Sixty five. Sixty five. So that's it about how the HD is initiated by the nurses, the patients. Then HDPOD, we do pre HD rounds or. In dialysis HD rounds if they already started and then check them afterwards or post HD assessment. Basically, we have to see all of them. Check them if they have any subjective complaints. We attend and manage them medically. We do PE to each of them. More of focus PE including but not limited to the palpebral conjunctiva, neck vein distensions for the water retention. Signs and symptoms, no? and then uh, edema, of course, bipedal edema, something like that, and then the lung and heart sound, especially if there are crackles. Usually, they are congested, and um, ascites. We do assess them if there's a need to adjust the HT prescription and coordinate with the nephro. HT prescription will include something like the duration, the frequency, type of dialyzer. Um, uh, the UF or the ultrafiltration, the goals, the blood flow rate, the alicate flow rate, and uh, heparinization and their dry weight as I mentioned before. And then usually it's the nurses who do the monitoring and then the technical stuff and they will just refer to you. Usually they are very efficient because they had prior training for this and um, if there's a complication, we manage the intradialytic complications. So the most common are the hypotension, the hypertension, the first dialyzer syndrome, cramps, nausea, and vomiting, the catheter-related bloodstream infection, 
Of course, there are the other complications that I do not actually want to mention. Ayoko batiin, but to name a few, just the disequilibrium syndrome, the air embolism, but I haven't really encountered them. Wag naman. So, we also interpret the new medical results, especially if they have um, the, the monthly labs. And then, we correlate it with the clinical findings, coordinate with the AP, so we relay it to them so, so that they will be updated. Usually, there's really the anemia of chronic kidney disease. And then, we prescribe medication and then uh, rewrite the prescription if they already consume all of it. And then, we also educate the patient, of course, especially when it comes to the fluid um, fluid restrictions no usual concerns are the diet and then the fluid intake because most of them cannot can no longer urinate uh, they really they would really retain it in their body and especially for the new ones it's hard for them to restrict their fluid intake especially when it's summer and they also do documentation such as charting or CF4 for field health depending on the dialysis center. Some are computerized, some you would need to write, but here it's actually computerized. And then we just pray for a benign day, hoping that everything goes well, that the patients would experience no complaints that we need to really attend to. So most of the time we just do chica chica and then they're fine. But some days, of course, there would really be, you know, some extra. So, um, for the management, it's gonna be uh, probably you can just ask me through my Instagram. And it's gonna be a lengthy discussion about that. So, for the blood alarms, usually they detect air, blood leak, air, uh, arterial pressure, venous pressure, or transmembrane pressure, but I do not really meddle about that. It's more of the nurses. So for the common drugs that we encounter, we have erythropoietin alpha, iron sucrose, ferrous sulfate, because chronic kidney disease patients really have anemia and it's really weakening. And uh, we also have Sevelomer phosphate binders if they have um, increased phosphate, calcium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, fabuxostat, um, the usual anti diabetics, anti hypertensive, anti um, We also have anticoagulations to decrease the clot formation since the blood is going out of the body. We also have NSS. And D5050 for cramps and um, hypotension. And it's also a must that they have um, updated HEPA-B vaccines. Alright. So, so, something that I'd like to share here. I started my duty as HDPOD during the height of pandemic. It was kind of challenging in a way because patients would really have dyspnea, crackles, and cough when they get congested. But there will be times that when you get to know the patient and it's not their usual state anymore, that would actually increase your suspicion of infectious disease or yes, COVID. So when they had chills, fever, it ought to be looking so toxic. And then we will advise them to go to the ER and they will get swabbed and they turn out to be positive. Thing is, you already got exposed, you talk to them face to face, you even come closer to assess them. So this emphasizes the importance of wearing PPE, especially the right kind of mask and the face shield. Because, you know, I never really had COVID when I was in HD, even if they coughed out unintentionally face to face and because of difficulty of breathing, they would even remove their mask. But, and yet, I did not have COVID during those times. Okay guys, for the usual things that I bring here, I usually bring my stethoscope. My tape measure is from Jezreel Pikachu and the alcohol of course. So I use this to measure their abdominal girth for ascites. And this one, a small clipboard with my notes, scratch. Anyway guys, I think that is it about 
for now. If you got some questions, let's connect through my IG, Azir Anjali or Reese Bits and Pieces. We'll to share and help you guys. Thank you for watching. Till next vlog. Bye!